Hey guys, Super Godzilla Final Wars here, and I'm back once again with another video. Today I'm going to be doing my Q&A, um, hey, okay. for basically, think this is, uh, basically somewhat of the little thing that I promised when I made my thank you for 559 subscribers before it went down because some people decided to unsubscribe to me. So I'm going to be answering all of your questions. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so, oh, we got a big one. Alright, this says... And for the Q&A, what's your favorite Godzilla movie? I would say Godzilla 2000, but I'm pretty sure that's obvious. If you watched my channel, you know that I am. You will know that I am a big fan of Godzilla 2000, my number one favorite God, Japanese Godzilla movie. Well, besides minus one now, minus one is now the second best Japanese Godzilla movie I've watched. But yeah, um. But I'm pretty sure that will be obvious, so I'm just going to say minus one is my personal favorite Godzilla movie. Do you prefer the MonsterVerse or the Toho movies? Um, I, as much as I love the MonsterVerse, there's a problem with the MonsterVerse that I'm currently having, and it has nothing to do with the human characters. It actually has something to do with the timeline of the MonsterVerse. You see, the comic books are basically events that have the comic books like Godzilla Awakening, uh, The Birth of Kong, Godzilla, The Aftershock, Godzilla Dominion, and of course, Kingdom Kong. They all supposed oh, and apparently Godzilla X Kong the Hunted. They all supposedly take place after the event, well, before the events of those movies even happen. And the thing is, the timeline is just so confusing because those events are never mentioned or referenced at all in the movies. Not only that, but I'm starting to get the this, this suspicion that the events that happened in Monarch Galaxy of Monsters never really happened at all either. So, at this point, I'm just going to say the MonsterVerse timeline is going to be a little confusing. I still like the MonsterVerse, don't get me wrong. But they just need to stop making the timeline so damn confusing. They need to actually mention these events that happened. Like Muto Prime, mention Muto Prime, and then we'll be good. Or Shiramiro, or Amala, or, you know, something that happened during the events of Godzilla Dominion. And, or one of those comic books. You know, mention those events. Or at the very least, reference those events. In the Toho movies, I also recently heard that Toho is going to make another new Godzilla movie. So, and... Well, basically, I'll go into details about that movie later when I'm done with my Q&A. So, Toho is actually not trying to confuse its fandom um, with their timeline because all the other Japanese Godzilla movies like Shin Godzilla, Godzilla Earth, Godzilla Ultima, Godzilla the Ride, Gemstone Godzilla, and Minus One. Oh, and Snow Godzilla, I can't forget Snow Godzilla. They're not trying to confuse their fandom because those movies don't follow the exact same movie. They're just their own separate movie. Plus, I like the idea that what Toho has in mind with their, like, with their Godzilla movies. Like, I don't mind Godzilla being a hero. 
I just like seeing Godzilla destroying cities. Because, well, it's fun. Seeing people running away, seeing the military trying to fight back, and all that stuff. So, to answer your question, I prefer the Toho movies. I still like the MonsterVerse, don't get me wrong, but I just prefer the Toho movies. What's your favorite Rick Hydra released figure? 100% Bag Ann. I just loved how the way Bandai made that figure. It's so well detailed. And the paint job is just phenomenal on that figure. I just love it. What, what's your favorite Ultraman Kaiju? I have a few favorites, specifically 12 favorite Kaiju, but uh, I'm just going to mention the, the two Kaiju that basically look like Godzilla and Gomorrah. Because I, I can't pronounce the other names for the other monsters besides Red King. Red King was kind of easy. Even though he's not really red. But whatever, moving on. And will you ever do a Discord Discord server? If you will, I could help you with it. Thanks for the offer, but I have no desire to do a Discord server. So... Yeah. Yeah. Ignore those questions. They're made by. They were made from Zill. They were made from Zill Cells and Tears of Three. So ignore them. Anyways, moving on. Last question: Which MonsterVerse villains do you think are the best? Muto Prime, King Ghidorah, Shiramiro, and Mechagodzilla. They were just more challenging villains to Godzilla. I mean, the Muto, the only reason why they were challenging to Godzilla was because there was two of them. And the reason why they didn't count Scar King is, well, while Scar King may be an intimidating villain, I'm just gonna, just gonna say this. He didn't do anything to propose that much of a threat to Godzilla in the New Empire movie. He was mostly targeting Kong. And the only reason why Godzilla paid attention to Scar King was because of Shimo. So, like, if Scar King was trying to kill both Godzilla and Kong, then I would consider him to be a cool villain. But he's not. So as a result, he's not that cool. If anything, he's kind of weak. So, yeah. What is the number one thing that you find very annoying about the MonsterVerse? Then confusing the timeline, because basically, look at the movies, like look at Godzilla 2014 movie intro, and then watch Monarch Legacy of Monsters Episode 3, and then read the comic book of Godzilla Awakening. You see my point? The timeline is confusing. Why are you doing this, Legendary? Why are you making your timeline? For your series, for your famous movie franchise, so damn confusing. Stop making it confusing. Jeez. Just freaking follow the comic books. If you're not going to do it, then just don't make the comic books. Jeez. Okay, I'm just going to ignore these three questions because they're... Two congratulations, and one is Storm Ultima trying to throw down a party, so Storm Ultima has no questions, so we're just going to ignore him. Will you ever do a dragon series? Do a dragon-like series? I had, I originally wanted to do a 2 plus X Light Fury story, but I thought about it, and... I was like, no, I'm not going to do that, because basically a bajillion people have been doing that on the internet with really impressive animation for their videos, so I'm not going to be, I'm just not going to do my own version. 
So, I will eventually do a Dragon series, but for now, I'm kind of very low on Dragon figures. Is at the moment, so I don't have that many Dragon figures. I only have a few Dragon figures. So, yeah. What do you think about the Avengers and the rest of the movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I mean, I think the other Avenger movies were okay. Some of them were actually pretty good. Good. But I won't consider myself a full-on Avenger fan. And the only Avenger movies that I actually really do like is the Incredible Hulk movie and, of course, of course, freaking Venom. You could, you could say all you want. You could say all kinds of crap about Venom if you want, but I personally enjoy the Venom movies. They're really cool and really amazing. And Venom's just so freaking funny. Alright, so next one. Sorry, I had to get a drink. Are you going to play any of the God of War games? I don't know about that one. Because, uh... So, yeah. So, to answer that question, it is a I don't know. Oh. Oh. So, I don't know how to answer that question. So, moving on. If you could do a crossover between Ruby and Attack on Titan, which characters would would you like to ship them with? Like for one Attack on Titan character to be with a Ruby character, or would you like to keep have the characters to stay with their love interests from their own world? Uh, I would do a little bit of both. I would make some Attack on Titan characters fall in love with some Ruby characters. I have currently four characters that I would like to ship with. The first one is Jean Arc X Historia. The second one is Armin X Weiss. The third one is Blake X Connie. And the last one is actually, surprisingly, Aaron X Ruby. So those are the ships that I would like to do. So to answer that question, it's a little bit of both. I would have some characters stay with their own love interests from their own world and have some characters fall in love with other characters with those characters. So yeah. Yeah. That will be actually a very interesting idea if I ever do decide to do a crossover series of Attack on Titan and Ruby. I wonder how Aaron will try to handle Salem. Hmm. 